because in Arizona we had so little water the trees chased the dogs. But, uh, <laughs> but I say thanks to all of you being here. Thank you for our veterans uh, who are here today. Thank you for your service to our country. I'm always proud to be in your company. And uh, I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes about something that I'm going to be asking the veterans to do here in the month of September. Uh, first of all, let me say also uh, thank you for turning out on this Saturday morning. I'm grateful that you are here. And uh, I, I don't know why, but uh, not too long ago, I was uh, given an award by the, uh, an organization that is dedicated to peace between Protestant and Catholic in Ireland. And as you probably know, there's been significant progress. And we politicians always like to step in and take credit, whether we deserve it or not. But anyway. And uh, I was reminded that the only uh, ethnic joke that can be told in politics is an Irish joke. And so, here's the story. There's a bar in New York City, one guy down at either end of the bar, the bar is empty. Finally, the guy goes down and sits down next to the guy next to him and says, where are you from? He says, I'm from Ireland. He says, really, I'm from Ireland too? What a surprise. He says, let me buy you a drink, buy some drink. He says, where are you from in Ireland? He says, I'm from Dublin. <laughs> I'm from Dublin too. Wow, I had a drink. I had a drink. She says, where did you go to high school? I, said, I went to St. Mary's. He says, no. Yeah. He said, I went to St. Mary's too. Well, more commotion. Guy walks into the bar, says the bartender, sees the commotion down there, says the bartender, what's going on down there? The bartender said, uh, it's just the O'Reilly twins getting drunk again. <laughs> That is allowed. Um, and I, I, I want to just take a few minutes to talk about two or three issues with you, and then I'd like to do what town hall meetings are supposed to be about, and that's respond to your questions or comments. Uh, I know there's a lot on your mind. This is a dangerous world. Uh, there's many issues that are happening, uh, not only around the world, but in our country, ranging from education to health care to uh, balancing the budget to uh, number of other issues and internationally we all know what our, many of our challenges are and I'd be glad to discuss many of those with you. First of all, I'd just like to say to you, I'm running for president primarily for one reason. I am the most prepared to address the challenge of the 21st century, the transcendent evil of radical Islamic extremism, which is threatening everything we stand for and believe in in this world. As Buddy said, I need no on-the-job training. I am fully prepared to serve. I am fully prepared to take on this battle. And my friends, it is going to be long and hard and difficult, but we will never surrender. They will. We will never surrender. And the fact is... Two days after 9-11, if you and I had been talking, and, I, and we just said, uh, by the way, there's going to be doctors in Scotland, doctors in Scotland, who become suicide bombers and want to just destroy the Glasgow airport. You said that's unlikely. If, if, if I said there's kids that grow up in London in normal families and like soccer, and they get on the internet and they go to the mosque and hear the radical message of the, uh, uh, in the mosque of extremism, and they want to blow up the, <coughs> the subways in London, you said unlikely. Uh, what I'm saying is, this challenge is, is global, it's, it, it, it is evil, and it, we are not winning in the area of cyberspace. They're making great use of the internet. They are making great use of, uh, of, of Al Jazeera. They are making great use of the ability to affect the opinion of young Muslims to make them into extremists, to make them a the force of, of evil that we have to that throughout, throughout the world. I'm qualified to serve. Let me just mention one other uh, issue that just happened. As you know, all of us grieve for the families in Minnesota uh, of those <coughs> people who were victims of the terrible tragedy of, of the bridge that collapsed. Uh, uh, our hearts and our prayers and our thoughts go out to the families of those who are still missing as well as those who were killed. My friends, that was a terrible tragedy. I think perhaps you can make an argument that part of the responsibility lies to the Congress of the United States. You know what we do with your tax dollars? <clears throat> Every time you go and fill up your gas tank and that money that flows to Washington as a result of that, we spend approximately 20 billion, <coughs> billion dollars of that money <coughs> on 
pork barrel earmark projects. On pork barrel earmark projects. Maybe if we'd have done it right, maybe some of that money would have gone to inspect those, those bridges and other bridges around the country. Maybe, maybe the 200,000 people that cross that bridge every day would have been safer than spending 233 million of your tax dollars on a bridge in Alaska to an island with 50 people on it. What do you think we're going to do? could have done with that 233 million dollars that we spent to go to the, to the bridge to nowhere. Bridge to nowhere. By the way, that same member of Congress on the floor of the House recently, the congressman from Alaska, said it was his money. He kept saying it's my money, my money. Have we gone so badly afar from the facts of life that we think that it's, that it's our money? That's what's bred the corruption in Washington. That's what's caused members of Congress to be in jail. And the most egregious is on these pork barrel projects on highway bills, which are intended not for bridges to nowhere, not for museums, not to bypass, but to, but to make transportation safe and, and available to all Americans. My friends, the next time that one of your congressmen or senators brags about a pork barrel project he got for you, remember whose money it was and find out whether you wanted it or not, and whether it was needed or not, or whether some contractor gave a whole bunch of money in his fundraiser, his or her fundraiser. I'm angry today because we just had a chance to reform this process in Washington, and we punted. We, we, we voiced off on the American people a joke and a sham in the name of earmark reform. My friends, when we passed by 96 to two in the United States Senate, the parliamentarian, I don't mean to get into, into arcane stuff here with you, but this is important. An objective observer called the parliamentarian to judge whether it was an earmark pork barrel project or not. They just changed it slightly, my friends. That vote was 96 to 2. You know what it is now? The majority leader of the Senate decides, or the committee chairman decides. The people that are giving out the goodies are going to decide whether it's an earmark or not. I guarantee you, within a year, you will see the same year marking and pork barrel projects go on as it is today. It was a sham and a joke for reform. And there was only a handful of us that voted against it. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's not reform. It's a joke. So um, let, let me just remind you again. We Republicans lost, uh, came to power in 1994 to change government, and government changed us. We got into this pork barrel earmark spending, and it went up and up and up. In 1987, Ronald Reagan vetoed the then highway bill and had 152 of these earmarked pork barrel projects on it, 152 of them. And at the time, Ronald Reagan said, I haven't seen this much pork since I gave out blue ribbons at the Iowa State Fair. That's a direct quote from Ronald Reagan. The President of the United States a couple of years ago signed into law, signed into law a highway bill with 6,140. 6,140. Think some of the project money could have gone to bridge inspections? Maybe so. Maybe so. So I want to guarantee you the first bill that comes across my desk as President of the United States that has a pork barrel project on it, I'm going to veto it, and I'm going to make the authors of that project famous. You'll know their names. You will stop this wasteful spending of your tax dollars in Washington, D.C. when I'm president. talk about uh, quickly three, three issues. Climate change. Climate change is real, my friends. Ethanol can contribute to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I still do not support subsidies, but I do believe that uh, ethanol will provide a very important part of us reducing greenhouse gas emissions and energy independence, which I would be glad to talk about. But the climate is changing and the world is changing and we cannot give a damaged planet to our next generation of Americans, and it's a serious issue, and we've got to address it seriously. That, that the other issue that I want to uh, address with you very quickly is Iraq, obviously. Oh, now, first, I've got to bring up the most unpleasant subject, immigration reform. As you know, immigration failed. As you know, there were those of us who said that we will secure the borders, but we also have to have a comprehensive approach to immigration reform, and we did not convince we did not convince the American